So what is the most successful county in Gaelic football? Well, the answer depends on how we were to judge the achievement. Is it the most All-Irelands won? Most provincial titles won? Most underage success? Most league titles? Judging by that criteria, the answer would be Dublin, Kerry, Tyrone, and even Mead and Mayo to a certain extent. However, there is no right or wrong answer, only a conversation. And a county that deserves to be part of that conversation is Monaghan. Let me explain. You see, Monaghan are the perfect example of what can happen when you get it right in Gaelic football and maximise the resources that you do have. Population-wise, Monaghan have one of the fewest of all 32 counties with only Fermanagh, Carlow, Longford and Leitrim having less of a population than Monaghan, according to the 2022 census report. Just to put it into perspective, Donegal have three times the population that Monaghan have, Mead and Kildare have four times the population that Monaghan have, Down and Cork have eight times the population that Monaghan have, and Dublin have 25 times the population that Monaghan has as a county. And of course, population does not always mean everything. I've been quick to point that out in previous videos before. I mean, population is an important factor in terms of defining one county's success, but it is not the most important factor. And I think there are plenty of examples of counties who have quite a big population, but haven't achieved anywhere near what Monaghan has achieved. More so, it's how you use the population, how you tap into a county's potential at grassroots level, and how you promote Gaelic games and schools at the earliest age possible. Monaghan have proven time and time again, year after year, they have what it takes to beat the county's elite teams, despite being wrote off by everyone, including me. Including me, almost every time. So that's why I'm making this video, because I owe Monaghan, I owe it to them. Their win versus Mayo on the final day of the 2023 National Football League meant that Mayo will play Division 1 football for a 10th consecutive season in 2024. Only Kerry have played in Division 1 consecutively for a longer period of time and they are the most successful county in the history of Gaelic football in terms of major honours. Really puts it into perspective just the, I suppose, scope of the achievement that Monaghan have achieved here. Dublin, Mayo, Galway and Tyrone to name a few have all in that time period played in Division 2, but not Monaghan, a county with the fraction of the population of some of the counties mentioned. Quite remarkable really. But as Monaghan fans will tell you, and I'm sure a lot of Monaghan fans will be quick to remind us, things were not always like this for Monaghan. As there was a point in time, a long period of time, where Monaghan were ranked as possibly one of the worst teams in the country and certainly one of the worst if not the worst in the province of Ulster and I mean that with all due respect I think in terms of quality I think in terms of the players that they had I think in terms of achievement they weren't achieving anywhere near what they're obviously achieving now and they certainly weren't achieving anywhere near the likes of some of their counterparts in Ulster and for a long time Monaghan were probably the whipping boys of the province might sound a little bit harsh but that was the reality of the of the scenario and to be fair with the resources that they have with the population that they have it wasn't it didn't look too out of place for example in 2003 monaghan finished fourth in division 1b which would be the equivalent of finishing fourth in division 4 in 2023 if we cast our mind back to the early 2000s the national football league was structured a little bit differently you had division 1a division 1b divisions 2a and division 2b so monaghan were in the fourth tier of the national footballing league pyramid and uh, they finished fourth in that division as well so you know probably no different to the likes of leash wexford carlo who all recently will be around that range in division four so that just puts things into perspective how monaghan were I suppose, you know, quite far off what they're achieving now. And Monaghan is a footballing mad county. They have hugely passionate supporters. So it's no surprise that every now and again they had the odd burst of life and had the odd Division 1 appearance, but it was usually short-lived, much different to today's team. And as we said, when you look at the population of the county, the resources available to them, that was no different to the likes of Longford, Carlow, Leitrim or Fermanagh to name a few. It was not a huge surprise that they, you know, were around Division 4, you know, and you couldn't say Monaghan were underachieving or... Monaghan, you know, were underperforming because when you looked at it, you looked at it and thought, well, this is probably the level that they're at because of the fact of, you know, resources, funding, everything else that's being pumped into Monaghan. And also the history of Monaghan as well wasn't, there wasn't too much history there to go off. So that was sort of generally how people looked at it. And whilst all counties do try to improve, and I'm sure Monaghan were absolutely no different in the 1990s and 2000s, and every now and again, to be fair, you see some counties lurch from the wilderness to create fairy tales of their own, but nobody has quite done it the way Monaghan has. I mean, some sides 
have had the odd rise here and there. Carlo Ryzen was one, for example, but it was short-lived. You see it every now and again. Counties rise from the wilderness and, and create a bit of history. You know, Tipperary was another one, but no one has quite sustained it the way that Monaghan has. And you have to give a lot of credit to Monaghan's county board because it could have been very easy for them to accept mediocrity and accept the level that they are at, but Monaghan had other ideas and instead took matters into their own hands. They say you miss 99% of the shots you don't take, and for the Farney County, they were about to embark on something truly special. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, this is the story of how Monaghan became GEA greats. So in order to understand how Monaghan GEA rose from the darkness, let's embark on a quick bit of history about Monaghan GEA, just to give ourselves more of an understanding as to how Monaghan went from, I suppose, Division 4 in 2003, to consistently staying in Division 1 in 2023. And if we go back to the very beginning, I mean literally day one, exact beginning of the GEA, Monaghan were actually pretty good to be fair. Hey, hey, the first ever Ulster Championship to date was won by Monaghan in 1888 after they beat Cavan in the final. I can just imagine some of the scenes around Monaghan beating their big rivals. I mean, that is something to stick the Cavan boys with. The game finished three points to one in favour of Monaghan. I wonder what the Pats Balans of the world said about the game back then. And I wonder what the GEA experts were saying about that match. Three points to one. I suppose only two points in it. And the early 1900s, to be fair, proved to be the Monaghan's most successful period in the history of the county as Monaghan won 10 more Ulster titles between 1906 and 1938 and even made their only all Ireland final appearance today in 1930. Unfortunately for them, they lost to Kerry. It was an all Ireland final appearance and their only all Ireland final appearance today. The next 40 years brought some of the darkest days for Monaghan GEA, but they did end it in quite some fashion as they won an Ulster title in 1979. It was a 41 year drought between their last Ulster title, their longest drought to date of an Ulster title, and uh, what a day it was for Monaghan GEA in 1979. The 1980s were a memorable time for Monaghan fans in fairness. Two Ulster titles and their only ever National Football League title in 1985. They beat Armagh in the final that year. You could argue that the 1980s were probably Monaghan GEA's most memorable time for a lot of their supporters. As Let's be honest, there's no one watching this video who was probably around in the 1900s. If you are, then Jesus, fair play. I mean, how, I don't know how you've done it. Unfortunately for Monaghan, though, the 1990s and 2000s offered very little for Monaghan supporters. In saying that, 2007 and 2010 offered hope for Monaghan as the emergence of one Conor McManus in 2007 gave Monaghan supporters a glimpse of what might just be about to come. And it was sort of the late 2000s, early 2010s when you got the feeling that something is building here in Monaghan they look a little bit different they, they don't look like the the whipping boys of the Ulster Championship anymore they don't look like a side that's a guaranteed win all of a sudden Monaghan started causing a couple of scalps they were putting games up to Tyrone they were challenging Donegal you just got the feeling that Monaghan might be about to embark on something here and with the likes of Dick Clerken, Rory Woods, Tommy Freeman, Vinnie Corey and Paul Finley to name a few Monaghan were slowly building a team that could compete with the best teams in the country. All the while, some investment was put into better facilities for players, huge amount of promotion in schools of Gaelic games, and vast coaching programs to make Monaghan GEA a team that could compete with the best in the province of Ulster. And whilst it's hard to know exactly, like I don't know all the ins and outs of, of Monaghan GEA, so it's hard to know exactly what changed and Obviously, when I'm saying there about promotion in schools and, and I suppose, vast coaching programs, I'm speculating some of the things that went on there because generally that's what happens when a county does improve and does grow. The standard in Ulster rose hugely through the 1990s and 2000s, and I think that did have an effect on Monaghan. You know, almost every county in Ulster has, has had somewhat of a golden era in the last 20 years or so. And I think for Monaghan, for, for kids growing up in Monaghan, they would have seen the likes of Tyrone achieve success. They would have seen Armagh achieve success. They would have seen Fermanagh, something that they done in 2004, which was get to an All-Ireland semi-final. Donegal were embarking on something. Derry had won an All-Ireland in the 1990s. I believe Monaghan football fans and Gaelic football fans who were young of age looked at that and thought, I, I want to create something for my own county. That created interest, that created belief. And 
I think that also had a factor in, in Monaghan becoming the county that they are today. The standards around them improved, the competition around them improved, and therefore Monaghan improved. And in 2013, with Monaghan having won the Division 3 title in the same year, few would have expected that the Farney men had what it takes to topple the then All-Ireland champions in Donegal in that year's Ulster final. But as we've very well seen, they did. And 2013 did present an opportunity with Tyrone, Armagh and Down all somewhat in transition and Monaghan being on the perceived easier side of the draw. However, they capitalised on this beating Antrim and rivals Cavan to reach the Ulster final. And with their then manager of Maliki O'Rourke, Monaghan had themselves one of the most tactically astute managers in the game and someone who knew how to get the best out of what they had available to them. And his team set up much like a lot of Monaghan's rivals. Emphasis on defence, sweepers, keeping the ball for large parts, waiting for the right score, high percentage shooting opportunities, playing it through the lines. And Monaghan were managing that to, to an absolute tee and you could see when you watch Monaghan that they were an extremely patient team and they just waited and waited and waited for the right moments. Hitting fast on the counter-attack and shooting in scoring zones to prevent the loss of possession and that was exactly how Monaghan steered themselves to a first Ulster title in 25 years with a six-point win versus Donegal. A memorable day for Monaghan supporters. They, as we said, Division 3 champions that year, just 10 years previous in Division 4 or Division 2B as it was called then. But here now, Monaghan had their moment. They've won an Ulster title. But the question was, Monaghan have gone and achieved a huge amount of success. They've won an Ulster title. But can they sustain it? Because as they say, getting to the top is not the hard part. Staying there is the hard part. And if we fast forward two years later, it was a much closer Ulster final this time around with Donegal. Once again, their opponents. But Monaghan narrowly came out on top as the better side and proved 2013 wasn't just a one-off and Monaghan were building an era of sustained success. And 2018 was perhaps the one that got away from Monaghan. Finally ended their voodoo versus Tyrone in the championship, only then to lose to Fermanagh in the Ulster semi-finals, a result that very much shocked the nation. They did regroup, however, beating Galway and Kildare, and a draw with Kerry sealed top spot in their Super 8s group, and that set up an All-Ireland semi-final versus Tyrone. The same side they had beaten a couple of months previously, but now it was the big one, an All-Ireland semi-final. Could Monaghan get to their first All-Ireland final since 1930? It was a chance for Monaghan to play in their first All-Ireland in 88 years, but unfortunately for them, Tyrone edged it. Monaghan were back in an Ulster final in 2021, but it was Tyrone who once again got the better of them. I'd say Monaghan fans are sick of Tyrone at this stage. And to be fair, like a lot of people do look at 2018 as the hugely missed opportunity in terms of, you know, that, that was Monaghan's chance to get to an All-Ireland final. But I think we would all agree, would Monaghan have beaten Dublin in that year's All-Ireland Final? Probably not. Probably not. Like, you know, especially when you look at how comfortable it was for Dublin against Tyrone. I, I more so look at 2021 as the missed opportunity because it was, they were playing Tyrone, obviously, in the final. But if they had it got over, you know, Kerry probably, Kerry played well against Tyrone, in fairness, in that All-Ireland semi-final. I, I don't think Kerry were as good as what Dublin were a couple of years previous. And I think the same had they've gotten over Kerry and played Mayo in the final. I reckon they would have won the All-Ireland that year. Whilst people look at 2018 as the missed opportunity, I actually think 2021 was also a hugely missed opportunity for Monaghan. And whilst all this has been happening in terms of Monaghan's results in the championship, their National Football League story is really where Monaghan have created a huge amount of history. Since 2015, Monaghan have found a way to stay in Division 1 of the National Football League time and time again. And most of the time, they've done it on the final day. Beating Galway in 2021 on the final day, Dublin in 2022 on the final day, and Mayo in 2023 on the final day. And when you think about it, Dublin, Mayo and Galway, very often three of the best sides in the country competing for major honours. And Monaghan have gone there and beat them. And fair enough, Mayo this year did not need a result on the final day, but they relegated Dublin and they relegated Galway. You know, and I think you have to give credit to Monaghan for that. And if we take it back to 2013 for a moment, I mean, it was a famous win for a footballing mad county who had been in the lurches of its rivals in the past few decades, a result that captured the surprise of a nation and very few people could have envisaged the rise of Monaghan. And the thing about it all is not only are Monaghan continuously surviving relegation, but they keep producing young players. It was only a couple of weeks ago, Ryan O'Toole scored a dramatic late winner against Tyrone in the Ulster Championship. Again, another result that surprised a lot of people. Monaghan are not slowing down. They are not slowing down and they're certainly not going anywhere. And even looking at Division 1 next year, 
It will be tough for them to stay up, of course, because it's always been tough. You know, it's always gone down to the final day. I would give Monaghan a serious chance. And I think, regardless of what happens, Monaghan are the example of what can happen when you use all when you use the resources that are available to you you maximize the potential of your county you get the right management structures in place and you get all the players pulling in one direction i think they're a perfect example for plenty of other counties to look at because monaghan have proved what's possible in gaelic football let me know your thoughts your opinions on this video down below obviously monaghan's story is, is certainly not ran just yet in 2023 i'm obviously recording this video uh, in, in and amongst the championship. I'm not too sure when this video will be, will exactly be released. But Monaghan in the group stages as a third seed, look, they will have a serious chance. I would certainly not rule them out causing a, causing a shock or a surprise or two. And, you know, under Vinnie Corey, young manager, new players coming in, there seems to be a freshness about Monaghan this year. And I, I do believe the good days, the memorable days of 2013, 2015, and 2018 to a certain extent, they're not over. And I think Monaghan might just cause few more shocks and surprises in the next couple of years, more so than people expect. Hit the like button and subscribe. Let me know your thoughts on Monaghan the last couple of years in the comments down below. And I'll see you all later.